So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the five best van build decisions I made. So there's a big difference between the usual van builds that you see that are the Ford Connects and the Sprinters and the Promasters because in a tiny van you really do have to think in miniature. When I was in the Dodge for instance it was a no build build. That means you just kind of put things in, you don't have to overthink it much, you put a mattress or a bed or a cot or something and some bins that you store stuff in and whatever you're gonna use. So when I came over to my Transit Connect, I had kind of that mentality in mind. I don't have many skills for building. I maybe had an electric drill and a saw and a screwdriver and a hammer. And so I needed to figure out what I could do with that. I also was thinking that I am going to be in a tiny space. So what could I do that would help this space feel much bigger. So I really tried to carry over that mentality of having a no build because I wasn't gonna have somebody that could help me put all of this together. So one of the best decisions that I think I made in this van build is this cabinet. I had seen some Transit Connect builds and the thing that I always wondered about is that they would still put regular 24 inch cabinets in a space that is way smaller than the bigger Ford Transits and Sprinters and Promasters. So what would happen if I found a smaller cabinet that kind of fit the scale of what I was working with? In my mind, and it's not necessarily this cabinet per se, it, you could find any cabinet that is like 13 inches wide, cause that's what this is and it was uh, 46 inches long, which fits this side of the van perfectly. So one of the things that I did was measured everything inside of it. So I had this camp stove and I measured, would it fit in this kind of a space, which it does perfectly. And the collapsible sink that I was originally thinking of putting here was also able to fit here. But then when I thought about it, I just, I didn't want to cut a hole in here and I, the space underneath wasn't adequate. But it's that thinking of I could have more space on this side if I was okay with working with the space that I had on this cabinet. And the other thing about this cabinet, you notice that I don't have the overhead storage cabinets, which gives me a lot more room to work with. I think if this were coming out, I would still feel a little bit claustrophobic or that I didn't have a lot of room to work with down here. So my decision to not have overhead cabinets here and on the other side has also kind of made this space feel a lot bigger. I made up for the loss of that space with the under cabinet space and my second best decision that I made, which was the over cab shelf that I built out. One of the things that I love about my shelf is that it doesn't have doors. Now that might surprise you because a lot of times you see people agonizing on how to get doors up on top um, on their cabinets. And one of the reasons that you put doors in is to kind of hide what is behind there. And once I decided that I could use those bins that could slide in and out and keep that space looking kind of organized up there without having the doors, it made a lot more sense and it doesn't cut into the driving space. I still have about a foot above my head when I'm driving. So it's very comfortable. And so that would be why that is my second best van build decision. The third best decision that I made is to not have a gray water tank. And I had watched a lot of videos with people, even with RVs and bigger rigs, that complained a lot about the smell of the gray tanks and the black tanks, but particularly the gray tanks because that's where the food and the water for all of that goes and your spit and whatever else that you wash goes into that gray tank. And then you are potentially carrying around as much in your gray tank as you do in your regular water tank because you need at least that much space when you're em you don't empty it out regularly. So for me, that after I heard person after person saying that that would be one of the things that they would change about their van, I decided that from the beginning, I just wouldn't put one in. 
So the decision not to have a gray tank also allows me to carry gallons of water in here that is usable for me. I can be out boondocking for quite a long time with that. So not having a gray tank was my third best van build decision. The fourth best van build decision that I made was not to have solar on my roof. And again, I know that for those who have it, they love it and it's very useful for them and they don't have to think about anything. They just kind of plug things in and it works. And that is wonderful if you have the space for it and if you have the knowledge to be able to even do that kind of thing. And at the time I lacked both of those. So I decided very early on to try to make the decisions that would make my life easy and not have to worry too much about how to do some of those things. Because again, I was doing it by myself. And because I didn't have that knowledge, I was like, what are the best options out there for solar power or power when you're off grid, but not necessarily something that is rigged and, and you have to have wires running and everything. So a lot of people were talking about the Renogy battery packs, Jackery battery packs. I know there are so many other brands out there and I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I tended to go with the one that seemed like had been around for a while and that a lot of people were talking about, which is the Jackery. And I've, I've run into people who have all different types and they all probably work pretty well. For me, I just wanted to go with something that was kind of known and reliable enough so that I wouldn't run into any problems. And so far, uh, um, I started with a 160, believe it or not. I don't even know if they make that anymore. It's just a little thing and I still have it as kind of my backup. And then I graduated in this tiny van to a Jackery 500. And for my needs, that works just fine. I can charge it while I'm driving. If I am somewhere for uh, a while where I can plug it in, I can also charge it that way. I also did get a solar panel, but it is a portable solar panel. So wherever I need to park my van, I can, and I don't have to worry about it. And I can have my solar panel be in the sun and charging my Jackery if I need to. So for me, having a portable battery pack like that was my fourth best van build decision that I made. The fifth best van build decision that I made, and this might seem counterintuitive to some of you, but it is no insulation. Again, I had seen a lot of videos and I was, I was tormented by what I was gonna do for insulation, ventilation, condensation, all of those things. Because you see these things in the bigger van builds, you hear that a lot of the issues that you have with condensation or the need for ventilation and, and especially insulation from the heat and from the cold. And so I, I mean, it kept me up at night because I had heard so much about it. What finally kind of crossed me over was seeing Bob Walls talk about insulation and how he had lived in Alaska with little more than like a carpeting on his floor. Now, I, um, I don't remember if he was talking about the whole van, but I know for sure he said that he didn't bother with having insulation on the floor uh, for quite a while and just used area rugs. And so that got me thinking, do I really need insulation? Especially since I don't know the first thing about how to install it. And I didn't want to take the time to figure that out. And I did have the advantage that this van comes with the manufactured ceiling board or headboard. I don't know what you call it. And it's somewhat insulated. Uh, and it obviously is doing its job. I know that in a car, you don't have problems with water coming down from your roof or anything like that. So I figured I wasn't gonna mess with what was already here. Then it was a cargo van with no windows, which can be an advantage and a disadvantage. For me, it kind of turned out to be an advantage because I didn't have to mess with windows back here that I had to figure out how to keep cold air out and heat out when I needed to. And so far it's worked. Now I have shown you in several videos what I did do is put Reflectix in where the windows would be because there was a, this just like tiny little sliver of 
an area that you could tuck something into and then I put the balsa wood just for the aesthetic over the top of it. What that does is just keeps that area from getting cold or hot to the touch. I don't know that it does much insulation, but I at least have those areas that are not going to get hot or cold um, with the weather outside. For my feet, I do have an area rug and that is all I've ever needed. I've never really had cold feet or anything in the van. And the advantage of having a smaller space is that you can heat it up and cool it off pretty quickly. And I had watched a video on the idea that when you do have insulation in a small space, one of the disadvantages in the heat is that it will retain the heat and it doesn't dissipate as quickly. Now you offset that by a max air fan or something like that. So for me, I was thinking that it could be advantageous for heat to be able to quickly dissipate when it is hot outside. And so far that has worked to my advantage. When I open up my doors and I put on the fans, it cools off in here pretty quickly. In the cold, now I try to stay away from really cold weather and so maybe I would talk differently about this if I were trying to live in Alaska or something like that. So I do use my little uh, defroster heater thing to heat it up here when it is that cold and then I just turn it off once it's a nice temperature and I'm good until the morning and if I'm a little bit chilled in the morning I just do the same thing and I'm warming up in here. But again I don't prefer to be in cold, cold weather. So I haven't had to test that to the limits. I also have surprisingly not dealt with any condensation and I usually keep my front windows cracked open a little bit. So I don't know if that helps me, but I haven't had any condensation issues. So I don't know what that's all about, but I heard so much about that when I was contemplating this that it it really did freak me out, but so far so good. So if any of you have suggestions or comments for me after hearing all this, I welcome that and leave those in the comments below. But those are my five best van build decisions that I have made. And I hope that if you are thinking about this, it's helpful to you too. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.